The purpose of this video is to look at the way that Excel handles hypothesis tests which compare two unknown population means. If you are interested in hypothesis tests that examine one unknown population mean or proportion, there's a link coming up now where I develop templates for handling those. Now, in the case of comparing two population means, Excel actually provides really good output um, in an easily obtainable fashion. So there's no, there's no template needed here. Um, we will be looking at the results that are driven by the data analysis tool pack. So if under your data tab, moving from home to the data tab, if under your data tab, you do not have the data analysis tool pack available, um, go ahead and click the link that's popping up now to see how to add that. I will go ahead and click on it. There are a lot of nice tools in the data analysis tool pack, um, notably correlation and summary statistics or descriptive statistics. These are really commonly used results. But the, today's video, we are examining the bottom four options, which are hypothesis tests for comparing two unknown population means. Uh, your options here are to compare paired samples. Um, also, we have the uh, equal variance t-test or the pooled variance t-test. Um, uh, the third option is the unequal or separate variance t-test. And finally, the z approximation uh, for comparing two means. Today, we're going to be looking at the odd bird out, which requires linked samples. Um, I'll tell you why in a second. But uh, the main point is all of these tests are handled virtually identically by Excel. I was going to take uh, this opportunity just to go through some oddities of the results that you get, which are uh, easily worked around. So canceling out of here, what we're looking at in terms of data is a hypothetical grade book. And from time to time, um, I get complaints that um, one exam is more difficult than the other. And since we have one set of students and two exams, if we want to compare the unknown population means of these exams using the same set of students, um, these are linked samples. We are using a paired t-test. So conducting that t-test is simple. Data tab, data analysis, paired t-test, OK. Popping out of that menu under the variable one range, I'm going to grab exam three and click control shift down. Popping back in, I'll do the same for exam one, control shift down. Now I've highlighted this order, which is obviously kind of backward for uh, an important reason. I'll share that with you later. Um, I am going to indicate labels because I highlighted the labels and it's useful when analyzing the results. Now I'm looking for any difference at all. So hypothesize mean difference of zero is what I will use. And I want to be 95% confident. So I will use an alpha of 0 0.05. The results I have indicated that I want the results in a new worksheet. Clicking OK. Excel does all the work for me and, and completes the test and gives me a host of results. Uh, sample means for both the variables, sample variances, and the number of observations for both the variables. Um, we are going to be looking at the test statistic, also the critical values, and the p-values um, for the rest of this video. So everything comes out perfectly um, if we stop here. There are some issues down here. Now, it's giving me the p-value for a one-tailed test. Now, in terms of uh, the p-value for a left-tailed test should be the area to the left of your test statistic, or in this case, t-stat. Excel is assuming if you have a negative t-stat that you are doing a left-tailed test, which is reasonable because if you have a negative t-stat, you will never reject the null in a right-tailed test. So it is giving you the p-value here in a one-tailed test for a left-tailed test whenever t-stat is negative. And I will show you what I mean. Um, so if we were to calculate this using Excel, it would equal t.dist. This is going to give us, again right here, left-tailed. So it's going to give us the area to the left of our input, which is t-stat, putting in the degrees of freedom 
and putting in true for cumulative, this is going to give us the area to the left of negative 0.541 under the T distribution when degrees of freedom are 63. And as you can see, we're getting the area to the left because T stat is negative. So provided your left tail test, your one tail test is a left tail test in this case, you get the right output. Um, we got a T crit here, however, that is not correct given we're doing a left tail test. So what Excel is doing in both cases for T critical is it's giving you the positive of T critical. So for this test, Given it's a left tail test and given this is the p-value, this should actually be equal to negative one times the reported critical value. So that you would reject if t-stat was less than negative 1.6694. Okay, so that's one of the slight issues with the uh, delivery of these tests comparing two means. Um, th this result here is, is going to be accurate every time, regardless of, again, the sign of your t-stat. If you're looking for the p-value for a two-tailed test, you can count on it being accurate. And uh, as we can see, it's accurate in this case. Um, once again, we just get the positive at the critical value. We understand that the critical values in the case of a two-tailed test would be equal to uh, one point. 9983 and the negative of that. So any value of a test statistic that was less than negative 1.2 or 1 point, negative 1.998 or greater than 1.998 would lead to us rejecting the null hypothesis. So Just reworking through, uh, everything up here is going to be fine. Um, this p-value will depend. Uh, it will apply to a left tail test if your t-stat is negative. It will apply to a right tail test if your t-stat is positive. Um, the critical value is the absolute value of the critical value in both cases, both the one tail test and the two tail test. Um, this result will always be correct. So these are some issues if you're going to use the pre canned hypothesis test comparing two means in Excel, uh, but it's so easy that these issues are kind of minor to get over. Um, thanks for watching, and I hope that this helped.